Hi there, I'm Rebecca. I run Lucky Sprout Studio. That's the name of my art studio where we are right now. And I sell a lot of different art products and I wanted to show you how I make some of them. So today I'm going to show you how I make greeting cards for my art business, which I have right here and look like this. I get these made, I think at a pretty reasonable cost. There's a little bit of work involved, but I wanted to show you the step-by-step -step that I go from having an idea to having finished cards ready to go. And I sell these weekly at a market here in Nova Scotia. So these are packaged and priced and ready to go because I'm doing two markets this weekend, so I have my inventory already. But I'm gonna show you how I do it and we'll jump over to my workspace back there and I'll show you what goes into making these cards. These are a couple of the cards from my collection I just wanted to show you. So as you can see, I sell them for $5 each. Uh, and this is all Canadian dollars because I am Canadian selling in Canada. These cards have a couple of different occasions. Um, I just grabbed a random selection to show you that I do birthday, I do Mother's Day, um, some thank you cards like this one, and some just different occasion ones. I also have a couple cards that just have my artwork on them. Um, some people seem to really like them. And I also sell these occasionally, people buy them as prints um, because they are five by seven, so they will all fit in some frames and like the mermaid print there that one is popular as a card and people tell me all the time they're just going to frame it so that works out well for me this is the back of the card it's got my little logo and you can see it's there tucked around an envelope so all of my orders do come with an envelope and they're in the little plastic bag which is not my favorite i would prefer not to be able to do that with my products but selling them at a market they get handled a lot and i would be losing a lot of inventory um, and I'm just a small business, I'm a very small business, so I have to protect my products as best I can. So I'm gonna show you what goes into making one of these and I hope you'll follow along. I draw all of my cards on my iPad. Uh, this is a bit of an older iPad. I would really like to upgrade it, hopefully soon, uh, but it works just fine and I use Procreate as my illustration software. So I just have this folder on my app where all my card art is. Not all of these are actually finished pieces, um, but I make them all in a five by seven inch canvas. Um, I probably should be using pixels, um, but I am not. And they are all CMYK uh, colors. So I just have them all in here and I duplicate the canvas anytime I want to make a new one. But um, I illustrate using mostly the pastel brush or colored pencil brushes that come with Procreate. I don't do any um, special imported brushes. And I just popped on a time lapse here to show you how I go about designing my most popular card actually, this little froggy birthday card. Um, I wanted to make a card that I thought would be appealing to kids for birthdays because I only have two birthday cards right now. I actually started making cards before Christmas and I had a really big Christmas collection which did very well but December 26th I realized I have zero inventory for any other events so I've been in the process of building up my card catalog and adding in birthday ones is a very important part of that but right now I think I have 17 actual cards and then I have several art cards that are just different prints I have from the other aspects of my business just made into greeting cards but I'm pretty happy with how these all turn out and I think the colors are very vibrant as well. I think an important part of designing a greeting card collection is deciding what your style and color palette is going to be. I try and make this harmonious across all of my pieces so that when someone stops at my booth, uh, which is where I sell most of them, I also sell them online but I mostly sell in person, um, someone looks at my collection and feels like it's really cohesive. So when I'm done, I export this as a PNG and I just send it to my computer. And then I designed the card actually in Canva. So I'm gonna just do a screen share and show you what my Canva file looks like for that. After I bring the PNG over to my computer, I open up Canva and that's where I design the cards before I send them off to the printer to get printed. So this is what the page looks like when I make that little mock-up. I open up a document. This is an eight and a half by 11 inch design, which is just the size of a sheet of paper. And inside I create this dotted rectangle. I'll zoom in just to show you. I create this dotted rectangle that is the size of the front and back of the card together. All my cards are seven inches by five inches. So that means that this big rectangle is seven inches by 10. And I just center it in the page and I added this guide right here. Just drag it from the side like that and add the guide to the middle. And that helps me see the two sides of my card. So for this one, um, I, you just drag and drop the artwork onto this side that's the front. 
and it usually just fits in perfectly because like I said I put the size of my design in Procreate to 5x7 so I just put that there and then I create a little back matter sometimes I put a picture up here as well but um, for the most part it's just my logo which I'll zoom in and show you so it's just my logo here for my card brand um, which is Little Sprout Cards and I just created that name because sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of separation um, within my product lines and then by Lucky Sprout Studio copyright with my name and the year and then my website below I want to make sure there's always a way to trace them back to me so if someone likes my cards they could go and find more so I put that there and basically this becomes a template and you can see I have lots of cards designed that are all just the same idea I've just drag and drop my art into the one side and um, have the mark on the back so once I'm done making this, which is pretty fast, it doesn't take very long to do this design, I just export this as a, let me see, a PDF. And I go to, I usually just do PDF standard, honestly, um, because it makes the files really big, but you can do PDF print as well. And then I have Canva Pro, so you can do CMYK. Uh, that is what I do, but I have not found that I'm just printing um, these over at Staples right now and I'm not finding that there's a big difference in the quality but technically you should be using CMYK. Put that as a PDF and then upload them to the Staples website and then I go pick them up like once a week and do my restock. I'd like to be able to print these at home but right now my printer is not able to handle paper thick enough and I'm very specific about what I like this to be printed on which is the 12 point um, one side coated paper. Uh, so it's got glossy on one side, matte on the other, and it's like a really thick cardstock. So yeah, let me show you what it looks like when they're printed. Here is what the card looks like when I get it back from the printers. As you can see, it's on this really nice heavy card. Um, all the insides of my cards are blank also, and it's got a glossy front and a matte back, which is really nice for writing on the inside, but the outside looks good. And this exact one is actually a misprint. I've already packaged all my proper cards, so I'm just going to do a demo for you on this misprint. These are the tools that I use to prepare the card. So I use my uh, metal ruler, a bone folder, and X-Acto knife, and a cutting mat. You could use a um, paper cutter, like a proper one for this, but I like to do it by hand. It's just the way I like to do things, and that's okay. You could also order um, these cards pre-cut and scored from Staples. They're just more expensive, and I found that at Christmas or before Christmas, there's really big sales, and you can get them for dirt cheap, basically. But the rest of the year, um, it just it was, it's just my profit margin, and doing it this way saves me at least 75 cents to a dollar per card. Um, and I don't mind the cutting work. Um, I kind of find it peaceful because I put on a podcast or a TV show and just trim up all the cards like this. So I use the metal ruler um, because the X-Acto knife won't destroy it. I went through a lot of plastic rulers before that, before I realized. <laughs> and I just follow the edges very carefully of my card and trim them off. It gives a really nice clean finish. I find this paper type as well, the 12 point one sided glossy is, um, since it's so thick, it just cuts really nicely and the edges look very professional. So I do this for all the four sides and then I'll show you how I, I do the rest of the card. I really like this step because I just feel like you can really see it as a product now and it makes me really proud to see my art turn into little cards. I don't know. Uh, to move on to the next step, I creased the center of the card with my bone folder. That's like the metal fold, or not metal, it's a bone folding tool used in book binding particularly. Um, and I just crease along the line of the ruler with the Know, it's not a sharp edge it's like a like a rounded edge of this so you can see it makes a nice crease that makes the fold nicer um, sorry I said nice so many times but when you fold it like this it means that the page doesn't splinter as much or, or the fibers don't splinter when you fold it which um, is very important to make it look professional I then score it over the back just to flatten out that crease a little bit more and you're done it's a card I think they look really nice. Um, it does take a little bit of precision to make sure you get that center line perfect, but it's uh, it's okay. It usually goes well now that I've practiced a lot. And that's it. So the next step is to package it up, and I'll show you what I use for that. 
All of my cards come with an envelope, and right now I'm just using plain white envelopes. These I buy in bulk off of Amazon, and I will provide the links for the exact ones I use down below. But they have a little sticker adhesive, so you don't have to lick the envelope, which I think most people prefer nowadays. And I usually just tuck it inside the card. For a plastic sleeve, I use these I get at the dollar store. Um, you can definitely find comparable ones online, but I found that the price per bag was pretty good for these. Um, and they're really easy for me to pick up more whenever I need them. Um, and they're just slightly bigger than the 5x7, so they can fit the envelope and the card. That was difficult. I found exactly 5x7 bags were no good. And these are the labels I used to put the price on. They're just from the dollar store as well. And I just hand write in my $5 price cards. Um, I do label all of my products, every single art print, every single card. It has made a big difference in people just not having to ask me as many questions. The rest of the process is pretty straightforward. I tuck the envelope inside the card, make sure it's lined up nicely, and then I just have to negotiate it into the bag, which um, can be a little bit um, time consuming really, but uh, it's just a matter of fighting. This is why having the bag that is slightly bigger than the envelope um, is really important because um, even this is a little bit snug as you can see, but it means the bag isn't loose around the card, which I think looks really good presentation wise when the customers are handling them. And uh, yeah, and it keeps the product protected so it's not moving around inside the bag. Then you just pull the strip, close it off, um, and put a price tag on it. And that's all there is to it. Well, there you go. Now you know all the secrets about how I make my greeting cards for my business. I hope that was helpful and instructive. And if you have any questions about the process or any of my steps or why I do the things I do, please let me know in the comments and I'd be happy to tell you. And if there's any other art products you wanna see how I make, I'd be happy to do more videos. I do have one already on making notepads from scratch, which is a really fun, a little bit time consuming, but definitely a fun art project that I do and I sell those. And I also have my art prints um, just a bunch of other random paper-based products as well. So if you enjoyed that, please check out the rest of my videos and I'll catch you later.